welcome back to my channel. This is Michelle for Afro Expats. Um, we're going to continue our lifestyle series today with Paul and Shonda. They live in Playa. And um, again, this is to give information about the various places that there are to live in Mexico, life um, through our lens, just kind of giving perspective on everyone's journey and why they chose where they chose to be where they came from and just to give everyone a little bit of inspiration about why Mexico. So here we are with yet another beautiful couple. I'm excited to speak to you all. I get to kind of go through the motions of we just also met. <laughs> so I like yeah. that it keeps it a little bit natural and um, you know your answers and our conversation is a little bit more spontaneous than planned. So I'll go ahead and let you introduce yourself. Tell us your name and um, where you are. Well, first off, we are happy to be here and it's nice to meet you. Um, I'm Shonda and I am originally from Louisiana by way of Florida. And I'm Paul, I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio, um, but we retired in Florida after I spent 20 years in the Air Force. Oh, beautiful. What part of Florida? Because I lived in uh, West Palm before moving here. Well, I lived in West Palm for um, a few years. I did retire from the Air Force there. My dad is actually the fire chief. Well, he was the fire chief of that area. Oh. Um, but we moved from there. I moved from there to be with Sean in Louisiana for about nine years. Yeah. For about nine years. And um, we owned a business there. I worked as a contractor for the government there. Um, but then we moved back to Florida when I took a job on the Kennedy Space Center. Um, and she was ready to uh, leave Louisiana and start our journey um, even further south. Okay. That's beautiful. So you were a little bit in Florida and you are from Louisiana originally. What part? Because everyone knows New Orleans, but are you? Shreveport. Shreveport. Okay. Okay. I've been to Louisiana. Well, New Orleans, I should say a few times. Okay. <laughs> um, how was it for you in Florida? Just to kind of, you know, segue. Well, from Louisiana to Florida was different. Um, and it wasn't bad. It was just, it was just a part of Florida that I was, we were living in. We were living in a little small town called Cocoa, Florida, Cocoa Beach, Florida. Okay. I know. And it was, um, it, 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 it was beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> the scenery. <laughs> the scenery is beautiful. Well, it is a small town. Um, yeah. I have yes. a friend that lives, <laughs> small town. Yeah. I have a friend that lives in, um, Oviedo which is maybe what, 30, 40 minutes, I think, away. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So I, I, years ago when I visited her, I spent, I think, a day at Cocoa Beach or so. But it is, it's like kind of touristy. Beach, yeah. Surf town. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so well, the like, scenery was nice, but there was not a whole lot to do unless you were into the boating and the fishing or mm -hmm. surfing, yeah. mm -hmm. skiing or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we uh, look to move other places. <laughs> yeah, nice. Well, that's a change. Um, I lived in Florida for over 10 years, but I moved from Dallas. I, I didn't grow up in Dallas. I'm originally from Toronto, grew up in Connecticut, moved around a little, and then I was in Dallas. And then I went to, uh, I just wanted to live in Miami. Or at least I thought I wanted to live in Miami. Yeah. And I lived in, um, lived in uh, South Miami area for a while, Coconut Grove. And um, okay. yeah, it was it was cool, a little bit cool while it lasted. But then when I had my son, I was just like, oh, this is too much, you know, and I moved yeah. to West Palm, stayed there. And then I really was just ready to get out of the country in general. So led me to Mexico. Yeah. After <laughs> I, Florida, I was ready to leave the country, too. Yeah, I could imagine. <laughs> so yeah. you, you're now in Playa. What brought mm -hmm. that journey and how long have you been there? You know, honestly, Playa was never on my list. Mm -hmm. It was never, ever on my list. I um, used to work at a hotel chain and um, going through training, we had to go to El Paso. We trained in El Paso and El Paso is right next to the Belizean border. No, no. The Mexican. yeah, the Mexican border. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, right yeah. next to Juarez. <laughs> 
And so the two Hispanic ladies that I worked with, they said, whatever you do, don't go to Mexico. And I was like, oh my God, I promise I'll never go there. I promise I will <laughs> never go there. And so they was telling me all these stories and I was terrified. This was many years ago. Mm-hmm. And I just believed them and just, I've been terrified mm-hmm. all of this time. She, yeah. And um, so once Paul retired and he had settled in and then, you know, we, we, we got into a discussion one day where he says, you know, I think I'm just going to go someplace where I can live nicely off my retirement. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, what about me? Can <laughs> two people live nicely off your retirement? And he was like, well, yeah, it all depends on where we go. So at that point in time, we started um, researching and looking for places to live where, you know, expects to, to retire, you know, Mm-hmm. And uh, so we had visited several other countries. Yeah, um, for my 50th birthday, my daughters um, gifted us um, a vacation. And so we decided to go to Costa Rica. Okay. Um, and uh, we like Costa Rica. We wanted to check it out because, like she said, um, I, I did the Air Force for 20 years and I had traveled the world with the Air Force. And I, I knew I wanted to retire someplace warm. I thought it would be Florida, but I had always dreamed of going back overseas. Mm -hmm. And so when I told her about that, she says, well, can we go overseas? And I'm like, (laughs) take me with you (laughs) if we choose the right place. And so we researched, like she said, and we we went to Costa Rica first. We went Mm -hmm. to San Jose City and it was nice. The shopping was was nice. The food was good, Um, but it was a little busy. And so we went out to Hako Beach. And when we first walked out on Hako Beach, she says, I love it here. I can live here. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, she's going to be okay with moving, you know, to a, a Caribbean country or a Central American or wherever <laughs> uh, country. Um, and so we considered Costa Rica, but we don't know Spanish. <laughs> and so we came back and said, well, let's, I, I, I kind of wanted to check out Belize. Mm -hmm. Um, because we would have to deal with the language barrier. And so for the next year in May, we went to Belize. Mm -hmm. And and we we did a little time in Belize City and then some time on Ambergris Key in San uh, San Pedro. Um, Mm -hmm. Like that. Yeah, we visited Belize City, um, but everybody says don't live in Belize City. And so we also visited Ambergris Key, Mm -hmm. which was a beautiful island. Secret Beach was nice. It was just being developed at the time. So it would have been, you know, a decent um, investment opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, But once we come home and we went through that next hurricane season, we kind of did not want to live on an island, especially after what happened in Puerto Rico and all. Mm -hmm. Um, And so the next year we visited Panama. Um, Panama had always been on the list since I was in the military and they had a base there. I tried to be stationed there, Mm -hmm. um, which never happened. Um, But she liked Panama. We were by the Panama Canal. It was lovely. Mm -hmm. Um, But Belize, Panama and Costa Rica all had one issue that I did not like. And it was the fact that we would fly into a certain city, but didn't have to travel away to get to where we want to live. And so it would be like a double trip, depending on how far the distance was. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make it as easy as possible. We had looked at living somewhere close to America, Mm -hmm. um, cheap travel, you know, a cheap flight from Florida or Texas, Mm -hmm. um, just a few hours, you know, and so, um, and we wanted to be able to get to and from easily. And so those three destinations didn't fit the bill. when COVID hit, um, well, before COVID hit, we had kind of decided we we're going to go to Belize and we we're going to try to get as close to the Mexican border as possible. Okay. Um, and we were looking at a little town called Corozal, which we still have not visited, but we did a lot of research <laughs> on it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I talked to her about it and I told her, I said, it's a small town, but it's on the Mexican border mm-hmm. um, with Chetamal and we'll be able to cross the border and do our shopping and things like that. Mm-hmm. And so we were li- really looking to move to Belize. We had told our family we're going to Belize. Um, some of them were happy. Some of them were, you know, like, really, you're leaving the country again, you know? Um, but, you know, for the most part, they were happy for us. Uh, we were going to go to Belize. And then COVID hit and Belize shut down just like 
the rest of the world. Right. Um, and that's when, you know, we were doing a lot of TV watching. Uh, we started watching the International Living Channel and then the House Hunter thing. Yeah, House um, Hunters International was one of our favorite shows. Yes, yeah, and they had some beautiful homes, but I don't know what I started watching one day, but I saw this most gorgeous house I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, we watched a show called Mexico Life, and, wow. and they were showing houses on the Mexican Riviera. And, and I was like, oh my God, look at that house. It was like the outside, it was like the house was a house, but it was, you had all of the outside, all of nature was inside the house as yeah, well. Yeah, the outdoor they're, living. They're, kind of. they're built very... Um, kind of like colonial style, because that's how yeah. San, San, where I live in San Miguel de Allende, which is in central Mexico. So we don't have a beach, but the homes are built that way. So you really don't know how much house there is behind the wall until they right. oh, she loves We call them compounds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they're like a courtyard with a fountain. Yes, they're huge. Goes, yeah, every house. Massive. Different. You know, yeah, like exactly. in the States, you get a whole neighborhood of like cookie cutter houses. Right. I mean, you never know what's inside of these houses when they say like yeah. a three bedroom, three bath. It could have three bedrooms and three baths and eight other rooms in there right. exactly so you never know what you get yeah but we were watching this show in this house and i was like oh my god where is this house and he was like maybe that house is in mexico you have to go there. i was like oh no can't go there you, remember those ladies? <laughs> you still had the two little ladies jumping around on your shoulders yeah. right <laughs> and the Don't more i watched that show i said I think we need to go and check out some yes. of those houses. We just got to go. Look some <laughs> I and, love you know, it. I love COVID it. COVID and, you know, going crazy, sitting there. We had watched every movie, you know, there was and every international living show. And so when she saw Mexico and she was fed up, uh, she says, yeah, we got to check it out. And awesome. so I started looking into it. And I had heard about Saloon mm-hmm. and Cancun. Of course, um, I heard that Tulum was a bohemian area that was kind of a hidden gem, you know, but we never really considered it. What what we did consider was when we were looking at going to Belize, Cancun Airport was going to be about four hours away. And so that would have been another option as, you know, we could fly into Belize City and make it up to where we want to live, or we could fly into Cancun and drive down through the Riviera and cross the border. And be, with that in mind, we already had started looking into the area. And so we started sh- looking at videos. I showed her some uh, YouTube videos mm-hmm. um, of, of the area. Uh, we realized Cancun was not really where we wanted to be that, but that would be a nice place to fly into. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I show her videos applied to Carmen and Tulum. Mm-hmm. When she first saw the videos applied to Carmen, she says, that looks a little too busy for me. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, she liked to look, Tulum looked bohemian and quiet. Yeah, it looked and, just free and flowy and, you know. And so that's what she said. She I was like, that's good. all for me. That's me, free and flowy. And so, <laughs> so we booked a trip um, for October 6th, we, for two weeks, October 6th of 2020. Okay. And uh, that was our honeymoon. You know, we've been together for about 14 years. Mm-hmm. But we just got married on the 4th of July last year. Oh, beautiful. On, Congratulations. You know, the hottest day <laughs> in that's the right. <laughs> yeah. um, so and you so we stay took, cute in the heat, right? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we set our honeymoon to come to Mexico and check out Mexico as a place to retire. Mm-hmm. And um, we, we did. We, we went we, to Tulum. Yeah, we went to Tulum for a week. We got here on October 6th and there was a hurricane that hit the night that we got here. That's right. Oh my so the first thing we did was go shopping for some groceries. Well, no, the first thing we did was we walked to the grocery store and stood, and in, a stood in a long, <laughs> long line. That's right. And you were back in Florida, right? Yes. All over again. Because we got advice. I had we had met some people online, uh, different groups here, and the first advice I got was go to the store. So we went to the store and we got supplies and we put them in the hotel, and uh, we made it through the storm okay. And then we checked out the city for the rest of the week, and it was a nice little area. 
but you know, it's, I mean, nothing against Tulum. Tulum is beautiful, but it's a village. It's not a city, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So after the week in Tulum, um, we came to Playa del Carmen mm-hmm. and she was here an hour or so and fell in love with us. Would I, yeah. Am I wrong? No, I, 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 I fell in love. Now, throughout this story, he's told you we've been in several countries and I've said I love each one of them, right? right. So, <laughs> I did, yeah. Well, first but I, have to, I have to just say, I, you're one of the first people that I've talking to, spoken to that has traveled to each of the places you were interested in, and that's a good thing. So, yeah, I just wanted to say that because I, I think most people pick spaces and then they just narrow it down and they just go and and that's right. fine too but i think that you really did your homework we planning tried. and scheduling that's what I used, that's, <laughs> yeah, that was my whole job in the air force yeah, yeah so sorry not to cut you go ahead uh i i did like each one of those places for their own reasons and um and and for their own reasons not so much um but I go, me personally, I had to go by feelings. And so when I got here, mm-hmm. of, of course, Tulum is beautiful. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. And it's also beautiful here with all the greenery and it's just the jungle and it's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. And so the beauty, that wasn't even it that, that just led me here and makes me want to be here. What makes me want to be here is that it just feels right. Right. It feels friendly. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, the people here are friendly. They're mm-hmm. very friendly and they'll help you. They'll go out of their way to help you. Mm-hmm. And um, also here in Playa, there's a really big community of us here. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, I know more people here being here since December of 2020 than I knew the five, six years we were in Florida right. easily. Yeah, easily. I think that that's the, a common denominator for a lot of us and probably just even expats of every color is generally Mexico's culture is very friendly and open. And, and I also think that when ex- expats come here, we open ourselves up to, you know, it's almost like that culture kind of starts to permeate, permeate through our what we think or how we used to be in the U.S., et cetera, and we're right. more open and receptive to friendships and socializing and doing more things. I feel like right. I've been an onion layer in this onion in layers in this regard. Where when I got here, you know, I was still in my mental, you know, box of doing what I do, and I'm just gonna, right. you know, get my son to school. You know, our routine: do do do, go go go, shop, fix the house, blah blah blah. But little by little, as I started meeting more and more people, everyone's so open, like, hey, come hang out, let's do this. And I love that. And I think that we are all collectively experiencing this change of living in a new country. And it's such a beautiful thing. It really is. Yeah, it, it is. It's like, a, it's like an awakening yeah. and it's, it feels so nice. Um, we have a, a, a neighbor that just recently moved in when about a, two months ago or so yeah, it's been, yeah, about two, months. two about two months or so um it, and one day paul and i came home and paul went straight to the cupboard and got um some flour and i said well paul what are you going to do with that flour he said well the next door neighbor asked to borrow some flour mm-hmm. and that just made a tear come out I was like oh he asked the girls <laughs> because it just felt so homey. Yeah, it felt, it felt it feels you know, good. Nobody yeah. in Florida ever asked the bar. You know, if I was making cornbread <laughs> and I needed just one more egg, I would have to get in the car and go, go. to the grocery store to get it. I know. Get it. Where you, know. you know, and he feels comfortable enough to ask us for, for flour, and we're fortunate and comfortable enough to, yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. give him to give it. And that, right. that felt friendly you know it felt nice you know it's it's the exchange it feels I hate to say this but it feels kind of old-fashioned right even if your parents experienced this kind of life style right you know like my parent you know my parents are like they were born in the 40s so I think when I think about this type of exchange I think about 
that time, you know, where people right. were more neighborly, more mm -hmm. kind, more concerned. And now I feel that unfortunately, when we are in the U.S., there's a lot of fear. And right. Rightfully so. You know, right. I mean, we do have a lot of things to be worried about, but I think we tend to really shut ourselves off from others, a neighbor, we just stay in our house, we, you know, we may say hi or whatever, but there's not a lot of exchange in terms of right. mixing your day to day movements with them. Um, right. And Mexico has definitely been a different experience for me way more than anywhere that I've lived um, as an adult. I mean, it's been really nice. I, I have to say that and I've said it a lot. So sometimes I'm like, okay, Michelle, they got it. But <laughs> no, I 100% agree with you that it's it's such a beautiful thing and it makes you feel even more welcome. Like that, it does. that space is your home now. It feels even more homey, right? right. Yeah. Uh, from the moment we checked into that first hotel down in Tulum, the way the Mexicans received us mm -hmm. and then the way the American community received us as well, the expat community, you know, they watched out for us. They're the ones that said, go to the store and then come over here and get something to eat before they shut everything down, yeah. you know, and, and that was beautiful. And then when we came up to Playa del Carmen, we checked into our hotel and on the way up, she had made a post online that we love to know, but now we're headed to Playa. And the moment we walked out of the hotel, just to step on the Fifth Avenue, mm -hmm. we were greeted by someone who had saw our post, recognized us and welcomed us into the town, mm -hmm. invited us to dinner and introduced us to about 10 or 15 other people. Love and it. all within the first five seconds of, we hadn't even stepped out of the hotel. We were <laughs> right. on the edge, right. just looking like, which way do we turn? <laughs> Hey, right. I recognize you, and and it was a welcome, and so. Um, and some of those same people that we went out with that night back in, um, that we met for dinner that, that night, October in yeah. October, came here for um, our anniversary party on the fourth. Oh, beautiful! Yeah. We had it's about sixty people in the house. Wow! So, yeah. Wow! All of them expats. Yeah. <laughs> wow! I love it. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. I absolutely it is. love it. It was it. great. Mm -hmm. It was great. Yeah, I love we. It. we I love the I love the expat community here. It's it's yeah. wonderful. We they and they even have a group for um that's I don't I mean I, it's for the both of, for men and women, mm -hmm. but it's mainly there's a lot of um single females, black females here, mm -hmm. and so if we're ever in any trouble, feeling any danger or anything, you know we you know, get on WhatsApp and um, even if you need help moving or anything, you know, and then that. you have the guys, they'll come in and help, you know, once that, that can. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's okay. I understand the idea and I think I've seen it um, because I do follow some of the uh, most actually of the groups that I've been able to find in Mexico that are kind of like that black centric, um, mm -hmm. mostly because I'm just, I'm so excited. Like when I moved yeah. here three uh, years ago, and even prior to that, I was doing tons and tons of research. I had already been to Mexico a lot in the last 15, almost 20 years, back and forth, in and out for different reasons. And um, when I was moving, it's a different thing because now it's you're moving. And right. I was looking for just kind of our perspective, you know, living in Mexico from our perspective, and I couldn't find anything, like nothing at all. So I settled for what was available. Some of it was dated and old, a lot of old dated YouTube videos. Um, it just wasn't there. There were no Facebook pages. Um, there was always travel information, which I had already, you know, had access to this. But um, once I got here, I think one of the first sites I found or Facebook pages was the Black Mex Pack community. And I was so excited to see this, you know, and I was on there. And anytime someone yeah. would ask questions about Mexico, I would share that. And in the last year, which is a beautiful thing, there are so many pages that have popped up right. in all the different parts of Mexico and even in other parts of the world. But I'm in Mexico, so I talk about Mexico. And I think it's great. You know, I feel that we all have, like you said, that thing that made you feel like you stepped into the city that feels like home to you. 
And I think that it's nice to have perspective from us and Mm -hmm. how it felt and just to feel welcomed and supported and not like a fish out of water in a foreign country. I mean, Playa, I'm sure makes it a little bit easier because there are more people who speak English and that's always a barrier is a language, you know, Um, but I noticed that there are so many groups. There's a Tulum group, there's a Playa right. group, there's a Puerto Vallarta group. Now I have Black SMA and it just goes on and on. And I think it's great that people can get what they need and ask questions right. in a safe environment and not feel like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, I'm scared to ask about blah, blah, blah from my perspective. So I think that that's great. I'm so happy to hear that you guys had such a positive experience you know, finally finding your, your space. Yes. Yeah. 60 people. Rah, rah. Yeah. <laughs> that was wonderful. Yeah. yeah. That's a beautiful thing. So what did your family think about Mexico? <laughs> <laughs> well, my family didn't even want me to leave Louisiana. And so yeah, they didn't. Yeah, they so, were. They were when the whole time we were in Florida. Like, when? When are you coming home? When are you coming home yeah. to stay? <laughs> yeah. And so, but this is different, you know. I, I believe that um, you know every bird has to sprout its wings and fly eventually. You know, and some birds fly further than others, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I, Louisiana will always be my home. Mm-hmm. You know, that's okay. You know. Um, but I, and this it's no, I'm not making any promises that, that Mexico is my final destination, mm-hmm. but it's my here and now, mm-hmm. and I'm happy. I'm very, very happy with it. And, and I think we made a great decision. Yeah. 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 My, my family is used to me moving around. I don't, they did not necessarily want me to leave, um, but they knew I traveled a lot with the military and that I had desire to go back overseas to retire someplace. And so um, they're not surprised. Um, my mom has actually just bought a ticket to come see us for a birthday in December. Awesome. And so uh, we're looking forward to seeing her when she comes out then. Um, and other family members will come soon, I'm sure. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm sure that people will come and then they'll have a whole different perspective. Uh, My first year here, I had quite a few family and friends visit me within the first six months. And so I was a little surprised about that because I lived in Florida for a lot of years and I didn't get that many visitors. My family is mostly in Connecticut and uh, Canada. And the first six months, I mean, my dad, his wife, I expected them to come. They travel. Um, And my mom, of course, she always visits. But I had some friends visit, even naysayer friends. I was just like, okay, and they loved it. They absolutely, one of my bigger naysayer friends was kind of confused about why I wanted to leave the US. And um, I remember she was advising me to move to a smaller city in the US. And I was like, I'm still in the US. I don't wanna raise my son there, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, I just want, to be somewhere different. And I know that this choice is best, the better for us. And um, she was like, oh, just go to a smaller town. And when she came, they loved it. She and her husband had such a great time. Um, she's been talking about it ever since. I mean, they really, really enjoyed themselves. And I kept thinking to myself, like, you know, sometimes you just gotta go with what, what you feel, right? You're to get right. instinct and yeah, not let- you go with what feels yeah, right to you. Exactly, not put the gray on your, on your sunshine. (laughs) Yeah. So how's it been just kind of living there, adjusting, um, I don't know, finding the things you need in general. I mean, Uh, (laughs) Shonda first. (laughs) Well, you know, when I came down and I, I saw Tulum Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh yeah, I could live here. Because I saw all the wicker, all the beautiful hangings. Yes. All the, I was like, oh, yes, I, I got to have all this blowing and flowing stuff, you know. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, yeah, I got to find a house. And then we're going to we're going to have it all like that. And this is going to be beautiful. And so when we got here. I didn't I couldn't find no stores that had that. <laughs> 
<laughs> all the stuff you were yeah, saying. Yeah, all that from the Mexico a lot. Not in the stores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so, it's definitely um, not there. And and so, and I had to get used to um, getting furniture made. Mm-hmm. I never took so many measurements before in my life. I it was like I was a carpenter. I had a set of keys. <laughs> You know, I had to took my tape measure, my purse kept a tape measure and I just pull it out and measure, how long is it? <laughs> you know, and so that was a little different and I didn't like it at first. And I'm still not a big fan of it, but it's very necessary. Yes. If you want your furniture made correctly, it's necessary. Yes. Um, the day-to-day life, I don't feel the pressure to be. I don't feel the pressure to always be made up. Mm-hmm. I don't feel the pressure to always be doing something productive. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't feel the, I just don't feel pressured. I feel, I feel okay. You, I feel, and it may be a little strange. I'm, I'm going to say, I feel like, like growing up, I used to see my sisters watch soap operas Mm -hmm. and I never understood how these people had all of this stuff and all of this money. And all they did was wake up in the morning and get dressed and walk downstairs and pour a drink. You know, I was like, they get dressed to do nothing. (laughs) I was like, I don't have to get dressed to do nothing. You know, it's just, it's, it's the difference in the States, when you say, okay, you be to work at nine o'clock or you have to be someplace at nine o'clock, you, you get, you, you, you have to be there at nine o'clock. And I used to always be late to everything. If a party starts at nine, I'm going to get there about nine thirty ten ish. But when I'm at party, you have to be a woman of your word. You can't be late. When you say, when you tell people you're going to be there at a certain time, you have to be there at that time, Shonda. And so I got, I got used to that. Mm-hmm. And so when I get here and the contractor says, okay, well, I'll be there at nine o'clock. I, it, <laughs> he may come, he tomorrow. may come tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, these are my people. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you made me change for nothing. I used to do that. <laughs> that was me. Yeah, You're like, I'm getting back to me place. now. Here yeah, and so, yeah, I've, I've heard people say here that, you know, just relax and, you know, you have to relax and what they call it, Mexican time. Yeah. I don't know exactly how they what say Mexican it. Time, yeah. yeah, I don't know exactly how they say it, but in other words, it's okay to be late. It's, it's okay. Right. Esther Tranquilo. Mm-hmm. Just relax. Yeah. yeah, basically, yeah. she's got. Yeah, she's totally. got to learn tranquilo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, this this area is good for the infrastructure as far as you know. There's Home Depot. There's Walmart. That was one of the other reasons we chose Mexico. Um, you know, going to Belize, we wouldn't have had you know as much of an interest. Uh, chain restaurants or or Walmart, Home Depot, um, Sam's Club. Costco, things like that that we can get to. Um, but even though we have those things here available to us, they're still lacking. You're not going to find what you find in America at the, right. at the Home Depot here. You know, you're not going to be able to find the fixtures that you want or the, the screw that you really need, you know, half the time. Um, and then when it comes to going to furniture stores or going to the Sears, which is probably the best store, you know, in the city, <laughs> Um, you're not going to find the couch or the table that you want. If you do see something nice, it's going to be very expensive. Yeah. Um, if you find a couch that you like, it's going to be very short, you know, for some reason. Those it's a very trial. small <laughs> couch, you know. And <laughs> so, like, <laughs> we, we ended up putting our house together. Um, she's made it a project because this house that we got was empty. I mean, when I say empty, the only thing was in it was the spiders. I know, okay. right? <laughs> That's but, what yeah. unfurnished is in Mexico is definitely and so she has yes she has furnished this house with everything from Facebook marketplace um buying things used uh, we've gone to um 
furniture places, uh, used furniture places and, and refinish some goods. And then, like she said, she has talked to a million different vendors and had beds. We've got three different beds made. We got wall units made, dressers, um, end tables and things like that. You get that stuff made. It's a whole lot cheaper than uh, buying it at the store. And right. you get it made exactly the way you want it made. That's well, true. You exactly. get it made what you think you said you <laughs> want to get. Because we got some stuff no, here. Stop, don't show that. <laughs> you my stereo cabinet <laughs> with the no doors, no walls. Oh, no. No, but I you mean, it happens. It happens yeah. here. You got to be flexible, right? You yeah. definitely got to be flexible because if they tell you they'll have it to you by Thursday, then you better wait about three more weeks. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> it's, it's been, it, it has been a compromise and it, it's been challenging, mm -hmm. but it's been rewarding. Right. Um, like lemons, it's hard to find lemons here. And, you know, coming from the States, we would put lemons in everything, just lemons on everything, just lemons. <laughs> but getting here, it's just limes. So right. where I was used to making fresh lemonade, mm -hmm. you know, you have to improvise. There's no lemons. So now I make fresh lime made. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's funny. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's doable. It's right. very doable. You're, you're not going to starve to death. You know, it's very doable. The right. flour may be a little different. You know, if you're a baker, the flour mm -hmm. may be a little different, but you just tweak your recipe. Yeah, and your house may not come with the oven, so you got to go right. to Sears. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> find something that works for you. I'm not yes, used to a countertop gas. oven. <laughs> yeah, gas stove. I mean, I, I'm fine with it now. And I, I had one that I can recall in one house in Florida. Um, but I was used to my electric stove and it's not a big deal. It's just, you know, the way the temperature comes out and how you boil your rice and all of that. It's like, yes. I have to move my pot over just a little. So it doesn't, <laughs> over, you know, little things like this. I mean, yeah. it's a small thing and sometimes it comes up in conversation, but yeah, there are a lot of little, um, differences that, right. um, I think we encounter and, yeah, you can't let them overwhelm you, you know, right, right. sometimes Just, you can get frustrated and be like, oh my God, like, yeah, you know, in the moment, but that's like one of the things that I'm, I'm not used to. The plumbing is a little funky here. The whole toilet paper <laughs> thing is, is mm -hmm. weird to me, even though I've traveled a lot and this is kind of common in a lot of countries. It's just, you know, making those like adjustments. <laughs> So it right. kind of can be a mental challenge, just remembering like, oh yeah, okay, cook that rice, right. you gotta yeah. turn it all the way down, move the pot over, put on the little burner, not the big burner. That's yeah. it. You should see her lighting the, the eye. Oh, I'm, not I'm scared. The yeah, I do it like this and, I, and yeah, he said, hold your hair Wait. back. Oh, yeah. I do it all the time, but like, oh no, you won't yeah. get me like that. Trying not to be Michael Jackson, right? That's yeah. what I said. You won't Michael Jackson yeah. be here. <laughs> yeah, the very it's, first. Kind of, it's scary. It's traumatizing because like I'm used to it now. But mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, I'll tell you what happened to me. And I'm surprised it, that I wasn't injured. So I wasn't paying attention because a lot of times I have like a gazillion things happening. I'm doing this and, and cooking in between, taking my dog out, whatever. So I had turned on my um, oven. And this is, again, the gas stove. I turned the oven on. I was doing something. And... and um, I didn't realize that I didn't light it. So oh, wow. it was on for a while, like maybe oh. five minutes. And then I was just like, oh my God, why aren't, why isn't it warm in here? Mm -hmm. So I go to light, like do the two things that, cause we have like one of the lighter buttons, but go to do the two things at the same time. Cause that's what I should have done. And I didn't realize I, I only turned it on and didn't light it. So mm -hmm. I go to do that and it was like, boom and my face was right there because I was leaning wow. in it scared me I could feel the gas air like push my hair my son came running out the room my husband was standing right there it was so frightening I it sounded like something exploded literally luckily wow. I was fine but 
I have been so traumatized by that since, <laughs> since then <laughs> that I'm constantly looking like, okay, was it already on? Was anything on? Make sure this, the, it, it's scary. Yeah. Not to I gotta go check my ass. I gotta go <laughs> check my ass now. Uh, yes. <laughs> when you do turn it on, just make sure it wasn't already on. Cause that was what happened yeah. was I had turned it on and didn't realize I didn't light it. So I thought, oh. like, cause I was literally like, okay, I'm about to, why isn't the stove? Cause I, you know, you preheat the oven. I was preheating right. it, but I hadn't lit it. So right. that's what that result was. So normally that's not what's happening, but that day, man, I was just, I'm traumatized. I literally have PTSD. Yeah. Because of that. Yeah. I'm just like, ah, yeah. So I take my extra precautions around the gas stove. Now it's not my friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Definitely. yeah, definitely challenging, but it's a little stuff, you know? So how have you, mm -hmm kind of adjusted overall, like to everything. I mean, I know you love it. Your house is coming together. Um, you know, do you feel like, uh, I, you know, I need this and this and this. I mean, I think one of the challenges I encounter is mostly hair. I mean, it's a little thing, but it's still a thing. You know, I know Playa has probably more people there that do hair because there's a larger demand than there would be here in central Mexico. But I don't know if you have any other things that you kind of run into? Not really. There's pretty much everything I need here. Mm -hmm. I mean, house decorations. And I mean, I could use a um, arts and crafts store, but uh, it's, it may not be the exact things I need, but it'll do. It'll work. Mm -hmm. as it with the, the limes and the lemons, you know, it, right. it'll work. I can work with it, you know? So it's not, when I was thinking Mexico and, and a lot of the other places that we went, when I was thinking those places, I didn't just thinking you don't expect for them to be as, I didn't expect for Mexico to be as- American. Yes. Oh, as okay. like me, America. Yeah. yeah. We, definitely chose the right area um, because we can go to the store and find you might not find the brand you want but you can normally find it you cannot find like well you might not find the jiffy cornbread mm. you know or grits they find something that you can make cornbread with yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. and, and, it'll work. and it'll work you know it, it'll work I'm, I'm from the time to where my mom used to say well you know, she would make something and we would say, we didn't want to eat that. And she would say, well, you're not hungry then. Right. And so, yeah, you're not hungry then. So That's when you true. get hungry enough, you'll make a meal with what's in the grocery store. That's yeah, true. But, do, but you do have to get used to the differences. I mean, like mm -hmm. the way meat smells here when you open the package, you know, it's mm -hmm. different in America. I guess we do a little more preparation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the way... um food spoils a little faster. Except for the fruit. Fruit seems to last It quite seems a while. like the fruit lasts <laughs> way longer here, just out. Yeah, in, but the meat in the yeah. fridge doesn't last as long. You know, yeah. getting used to not being able to drink the water. Mm -hmm. She stresses if we get down one bottle of water for the <laughs> water cooler, you know, and the water delivery man, which is supposed to come twice a week, may show up once a week on the wrong day. So you just got to leave your bottle out there with the money on it. <laughs> Yeah, you one know, of those little things that you're like, no consistency. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Her, yeah. her main thing is, is, is she always says, just say that. She's like, you know, like <laughs> we, we didn't know how to get water. So we uh, we were born to buy water at the store carrying these big water jugs. But then we would see our neighbors with water jugs, you know, sitting outside it would be empty one moment and then you come back and it's full. And you're like, well, how, how do they, they get this water? water? So you ask the gate, uh, how do they get right, the water? Exactly. Nobody knows. Nobody knows you know, how to get then, the water. Then you find a guy with the truck running around and you stop right. the truck. Hey, flag them down, how are you right? getting yeah. this water here? Now, 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 we're doing all this communicating <laughs> without speaking Spanish, without knowing any Spanish. Right. You know. And I so love that. It. Yeah, and so we're, we're like pointing and we're like, you know, and they're like, language. Yeah. you're like, Agua. Now yeah. we're to get one. It's never on time, but we get, yeah, <laughs> you know. yeah it, it takes a little getting, it takes a little getting used to, and it, and it's an adjustment. 
but it's doable. It, there's been times when I was so frustrated and my favorite line is, look, I don't have to live like this. I can go home, <laughs> you know? And so, uh, and it's all about the communication. It, it was really, it was really all about the communication. Uh, if, if we would have known Spanish, mm-hmm. I believe our transition could have been a lot easier. Mm-hmm. There are things now we can laugh about. You know, but when we were going through them, we were like frustrated, like, oh, my God, why did we right. do this? You know, <laughs> and, and, it, and now that we look back on it, it was really just the lack of miscommunication, you know, with the translation, right. really. And so right. um, it's not so bad. It's, yeah. it's, it's not bad at all. Yeah. At we, all. We have a we have a, t- a beautiful home here. It's two stories with a rooftop, which is one thing she it. wanted. And we have a jacuzzi on the roof and they promised us, you know, this is a new house. They promised us a working jacuzzi with hot water. Well, we got here and it barely worked and it did not have hot water. (laughs) So we complained and complained and they kept coming back to fix it. They fixed the pump, they put a heater on it. It still wasn't working properly. Mm -hmm. Finally, they put an automatic water heater on it where we can just fill it with hot water. And so now we got a, a, a hot tub that fills with hot water and it runs. But if you sit in it long enough, it's going to fill with this stuff called sorrow, which we didn't know what sorrow was until we figured out it's lying. <laughs> so now we understand why we never had hot water in our jacuzzi. It's because hot water creates lime. It builds up in the pipes. Uh... It's that's what causes the plumbing issues here. And so they didn't have hot water in jacuzzi because it's going to cause issues eventually. And, you know, like if we would have understood that in the beginning, we would have been like, oh, okay, well, yeah, that's the reason why. But they just kept telling us that, oh, it's new. And we're we're looking at it like. This is not how jacuzzis work. A cold water bath is not what we're looking for, you know. Like a almond flyer, but. Yeah, yeah you know, if they'd have just said, look, if we put hot water in here, it's going to create problems, right. then we would have known, you know. Right. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Just say that. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, I agree that sometimes the communication creates so many, like, frustrations and challenges sometimes because it's like, I didn't understand. I didn't get it. And, you know, and then, too, I think that they culturally have a tendency to say yes to things, even if there's a good reason for them to say, that's just not a good idea. They right. kind of are like more like, you know, well, okay, you know, more gracious, they want to please. And sometimes that's a bad thing. <laughs> we, we, we end up being the crazy Americans that keep complaining and, and, and you know, right. want this hot water, which right. is going to cause problems in our pipes, you know? Yeah. So how was the process for you, speaking of your home, to like find the space? Um, I don't know if you leased or purchased, but like how was the process for you in general? Because some people come, they do sight unseen. Um, some people will come and, uh, you know, take, take a month to kind of look around, get the right connections. What was your, what was your process? Well, once we got to Tulum and I liked it, I immediately started looking for houses okay. and um, there are no houses in Tulum. So we ended up, that was one of the other reasons that we chose Playa. So okay. she started looking for houses in this area. Okay. Well, there are houses in Tulum, right? There are okay. condos. <laughs> okay. So okay. are you in a development or like a standalone? We're in a stand. We're in a standalone. We're in a standalone okay. home in a in a development. We're in a okay. uh, in, yeah in Bocas de Bamboo, which is a uh, beautiful housing community. We're behind two separate gates, mm-hmm. and so yeah, we're definitely in a development. Okay. When we got to apply and we looked around, I wanted to live in a condo near the beach, right out, out right in Central, near Fifth Avenue, not necessarily on Fifth Avenue. Excuse me, I'm on Fifth Avenue, but near Fifth Avenue, mm-hmm. um, to be able to walk out and, and enjoy all of the scenery, the beach, the food, the music, and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but after we spent a week here looking around and we thought we found a home, um, that one fell through. So we ended up spending the second week. Um, during that time period, she says, Look, babe, I don't think you really want to live in a condo. I think mm-hmm. you're going to need more space. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, she says, you play your music too loud and you do a little too much partying and socializing to be in a small condo. And so. And I said, I'm not going to be taking grocery up flights of stairs or waiting <laughs> on this elevator. I'm not going to be doing that. And sometimes right. when I want to go, to, what if I forget my charger downstairs in the car and I just want to just throw on something and go down there? I can't do that in a condo. True. And so. So she, has, so she did a lot of searching. We looked at a lot of different houses. Some of them were uh, standalone units out in the community um, with the little compounds around them, the little fences around them or, you know, the walls. Um, but we kind of wanted to live in a, uh, a gated community where we feel a little more secure. Being that, we were choosing not to live in the central area of town. Right. And so we live in an area called Central Maya, um, which has a mall where we can walk to. Um, and we can still walk to the beach, but it'll take us about 35 or 40 minutes to walk there from here. And we have walked there before. Yeah. And so it's just, you know, whenever it's cool enough to walk, um, it, it, it is doable. Mm -hmm. um, where we live at now, um, it's a 10 minute walk to the mall. Okay. And in the mall, there's a supermarket, banks. Um, Our gym the gym, there's a McDonald's, there's a Starbucks at the corner, there's everything. There's a, um, their wholesale place, City Club is, is there. And Sam's Club is right across. And Sam's street. Club all is right across. Yep, yeah, all walking distance. Yeah. And we've walked plenty of times. Um, and Man. so our neighborhood is great. Our neighborhood is great. Um, I remember the first time walking our neighborhood. I got out one morning and I told Paul, I'm just going for a walk. He, and I'm normally the scared one. I'm going to stay behind <laughs> the gate and I'm going to be looking at him like, are you sure you want to go out there? <laughs> and so I got up one morning. I said, look, I'm going walking. And he said, where are you going? I said, I'm just going to walk the neighborhood. And I walked just right on out the gate. And I just had myself a blast just walking with my headphones. Mm -hmm. And he said, when I got back, he said, you felt safe. I was like, yeah, I really did. I, I, felt, I felt great. I felt, and he, he can tell you walking the neighborhood in Florida, I, it was like pulling teeth to get me to do that. Mm -hmm. But this neighborhood here, I just get out and walk. Yeah, we walk for exercise. I mean, we go to the gym, but she, she prefers to walk, mm -hmm. um, you know, three, four, five miles walks. And so when she first told me she was going to walk the neighborhood, I thought she was just walking around our gated community neighborhood and the mm -hmm. other little gated communities around here. But when she got back, she told me how she had traversed all around and ended up on the main avenue and I'm like, how did you get there? You know? <laughs> and so she took me on this walk. And I got to tell you, this walk that she takes and go through all these different, because she was telling me it's not just, we thought it was just our neighborhood and another right. one right here. We hadn't ventured further down the road. Mm -hmm. She's like, no, baby, they're building beautiful houses and neighborhoods, nice. you know, communities all down the block, you gotta see it, it's all brand new. So she takes me on this walk and we go through past all these different, maybe five, six, seven different neighborhoods. I'm like, wow, you're right, they're all right here. Mm -hmm. you know. And then she starts going down these dirt paths and we are just <laughs> trekking down the road, I mean, for miles, I mean, odors and dirt and animals on the side, you know, we can hear things, I'm like, we're going and she's just checking it's okay it's okay you know and then we come on to this road and we're in a whole nother neighborhood which i know i've been to before because we saw houses but i'm like we are very far away from the house. <laughs> this is what you do she's like yeah I'm in mexico but i couldn't get you to walk around coco beach <laughs> they stand their ground in florida <laughs> We would get in the car and drive to the park and walk three or four or five miles and then get back in the car and go home. Drive That's home. if we were walking together. Right. If I was walking by myself, I would walk straight out the door and just right. walk the neighborhood. But it was like pulling teeth to get her to do that. But in Mexico, she walks out the door and will walk five miles <laughs> and not even care. I'm like, baby, you don't even speak the language. <laughs> <laughs> you found your speed. I, I feel yeah. you. I feel you. Yeah. I mean, 
Yeah, I was the same when I got here. Well, I didn't have a car. I don't know if you guys uh, invested in a car or not, but when we first got just here- Just recently. I, yeah, I was just like, oh, I don't need a car. I'm gonna walk around, you know, I'm gonna walk into town. I'm gonna walk here where, wherever. And then as, you know, things kind of life started happening with having to get my son to school, that became a little bit challenging. So we did finally invest in the vehicle, but I'm glad that we did because now it gives me you know, like access to do things that are not within walking distance. And that's right. So how was that process for you looking for buying? Because I know it was a little complicated here. I had to like kind of ask around. Yeah, I had to do word of mouth to buy cars. Oh, yeah. Um, I basically bought it off a marketplace. You know, we buy a lot of stuff off a marketplace. I'm going to get on marketplace because I haven't really used that if I need anything in the future. I've looked at it a few times, but I know a lot of people look for their apartments and cars and furniture. It's it's all on there. I'm not advertising for Facebook at all. Well, that's what people told me. That's what people told me to do. And so that's what... that's what I started doing, you know, back home, I would just go to home goods, you know, and and find, you know, get what we need or whatever. But they said, look at marketplace. And then, you know, if you want something instantly, you know, that you don't have to get made you and it's already there and in decent condition, you know? So, yeah, we bought used furniture on marketplace. We bought new things that had made yeah, on the marketplace. I'm, I'm getting to that. Oh. But, and so when it came to buying a car, that's mm-hmm. where I looked on marketplace. I mean, I did. There's a couple other websites um, uh, that I look, you know, looked at, but I was looking for, you know, a decent. Well, I was looking for a nicer vehicle. They tell you not to buy a luxury vehicle here as mm-hmm. an expat because you don't want to become a target. Yeah. Even though my neighbors drive Mercedes and BMWs, Mine too. they don't want me to be a target. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I um, looked at the Mercedes and BMWs, but I ended up by, uh, finding a, a Volkswagen uh, mm-hmm. Touareg. I only wanted to spend about $5,000. And so I got a, uh, an older model uh, mm-hmm. Touareg that seems to work pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um it took a little negotiating on marketplace. I did look at several cars and when it comes to buying a used vehicle in Mexico, it's not as, I mean, you got to realize your used vehicle is going to be a little more used than it would be if you bought it in America, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> and so, um, you know, you get what you pay for as well, you know, here, Sometimes. but you can find vehicles here. And so I did, uh, I did, find a guy he actually speaks pretty good english mm-hmm. um, and he sold me his vehicle and then i hired what i thought was a lawyer to help me get registered and then she's like, well i'm not a lawyer i'm just a fixer but whatever <laughs> she fixed it for me you know and so fixer. we are good Wait, what does that mean a fixer like, well um uh, i mean you got people who can help you out get things done like um i have my permanent residency um, and she has her temporary residency. And we could have done that on our own, or you can hire somebody gotcha. to help you out, whether gotcha. it be a lawyer or somebody that knows what they're doing. Okay. Um, we hired a person who we were told was a lawyer. I guess we should have looked a little further into that. Mm-hmm. But we were we hired a person um, to help us get our, our documents together um, uh, for a fee, of course, um, because I wanted, you know, we shipped some furniture here and as Mm -hmm. an expat, you know, um, well, as a permanent resident, you can ship, you know, make a shipment here. Um, but I could not receive the shipment until I had my actual residency card. And so even though I was able to ship it on paperwork, I had to have the physical card, Mm -hmm. um, and my stuff, our stuff would have sat in customs for about two months if we would have went through the regular process. Mm-hmm. And so I paid a little extra money. The fixer got us in, well, got me into immigration and within a gotcha. week or so. You so know? you can move the process on faster. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I mean, there's so many little challenges. Um, and I like that you're sharing this part of your journey because mine was different and I'm sure others are different. You know, we ship too, but... I ran into that challenge uh, after, actually a day or two before the shipping company was arriving in Florida to get all our things. 
And then suddenly it was just like, oh, I can't get my visa right now because of some other things. So yeah, I had to kind of talk to a shipping company, like what are my options? And, you know, they presented a bunch of different things and yeah, <laughs> it, it changes along the way. But um, yeah, even the car buying process, um, which I find interesting. And I don't know if this is like a blanket cover to Mexico or if it is different in, because what I find is that the laws change from state to state, whereas in the US, there's a standard law. You know what I'm saying for some certain things. For example, getting a driver's license, I think it could change from state to state in Mexico. But here in Guanajuato, it's you can get a license with a tourist visa. I don't think you can do that in the US anywhere. I don't think as a visitor, you can just go to DMV and get a driver's license. You know what I mean? You need to be like a citizen or green card holder or something like this. I think that's the way it works in the US. So, but here I was able to get that. And then that allowed me then to buy a car. So I needed to have my Mexican in Guanajuato. I needed to have my Mexican driver's license before I could buy a Mexican plated vehicle. So I don't know if you ran into that at all. No, I still don't have a Mexican license. I bought the car with my American license. Interesting. Yeah, no, they told me I have to have a Mexican driver's license to buy a vehicle and it'd be legal. But I've heard that from state to state things, it depends on the state, what their laws yeah, the are. Rules are very different from what I understand. Um, the requirements for pretty much everything, especially with vehicles, are different state to state. Um, I did not have to have a Mexican license. Apparently, you don't necessarily have to have that here in Quintana Roo. Mm -hmm. um, the, the car was plated from another area, so I had some difficulties getting all the proper documents together. Um, but the fixer helped us out with that one as well. And it didn't cost me much this time. <laughs> so. and yeah, it's not that expensive. I mean, considering <laughs> the hassles of not knowing, understanding maybe everything on paper, you want to know what you're signing. Right. Um, exactly. It's kind of worth it. I think I paid the lady that helped me, I would say around 40 US dollars to help me with the process of getting, because I actually wanted a um, Vocho, the old Volkswagen Beetles, because I always like these cars and that paperwork. I mean, this is a 92 vehicle that I have and it's like old. And the paperwork, they, you know, finding the original, they need the original title. So that exactly. was a challenge. And it exactly. was just like, you know, this car's like almost 30 years old. <laughs> so yeah. there were some that I actually liked. I, mm -hmm. I couldn't buy them because they didn't have the paperwork. And I was just like, I don't want to be stuck with a vehicle that's in someone else's name, you know? Right, right. So yeah, that's a challenge. But how's it been just kind of ownership having it? Um, you know, I find things very inexpensive to fix. We have a Honda and I, I love that. I, you know, that it's one reliable, but it didn't cost me a lot because in the US, the Hondas, even the used ones are like expensive and ours is used as well. And I was so happy to find this deal and it was all word of mouth. <laughs> like a neighbor told me so-and-so is moving back to the u.s are you interested in her car so you don't really have like the pick of what you might want to buy necessarily right, right, right what comes into your your viewpoint and you're like okay that's within my price range it looks good i'll get that car yeah yeah <laughs> how's it been like getting your insurance and everything it's been very affordable the, the insurance was very affordable i got a whole year for about three hundred dollars or so um and so far, it's been pretty um, cheap or easy to get it worked on. I took it around uh, around the corner, actually, to um, a, a mechanic that a friend suggested and just pulled up on the guy and he popped the hood and, and checked some things out for me and basically didn't want to take any money. I had to give him like $15. He had tried to hand me back a couple uh, pesos. Um, he pointed out that I had a vacuum hose that was cracked and um, we had some friends come into town for our anniversary. We took them to Tulum and the hose actually gave us a little problem. So when we got back, me and the friend went to the auto zone, which they have auto zone here in Mexico. Mm -hmm. We went there and we asked about vacuum hose and they pointed us to the back and it was a long bin with hose in it. 
And the guy said, well, how many feet you need? We needed three feet of hose. It cost me $3. Mm-hmm. We walked outside, stuck the hose on the car, and it's running great. So $3 fixed the car. <laughs> you know? I mean, I feel like people kind of probably find this hard to believe, especially if they're not experiencing it. But, um, you know, I always try to emphasize that a lot of people before, you know, uh, this movement, because I think we're kind of a movement here, Blacks moving to other countries, but to Mexico, that the path has been paved. So the cost that we're paying right now, it's just, this is, is the norm, you know, like people should understand, like if you are looking to save um, money on your cost of living, and also I, ca- I call it increasing maybe the quality, because I do think a lot of people come here to increase the co- quality of life. It's not just um, I want to get cheap rent, you know, or buy a cheap house. It's you're able to afford a lot of other things that maybe you could not get or have or do all at the same time in the U.S. So I kind of try to impress that on folks that cost of living here across the board is less expensive. So sometimes if someone is considering a space for rent, like let's just say, um, you know, your budget is seven hundred dollars a month and you only want to pay this for rent but let's say you find a house that's 900 think about all the other things that cost you less way less you know groceries like you said insurance on your vehicle maybe medical insurance um, just whatever it is you know that you may have paid lots and lots for in the U.S. consider the whole thing as a whole package like how much are you spending for this and maybe this is less so maybe you can get that extra one or two hundred dollars out your pocket because you're you're probably coming in thinking about utilities being somewhat the same not necessarily medical because i think people do their research for medical but you know you don't really know what the water costs some places include it some places include internet um and even if you have to pay internet it's Still less expensive. So I always say, think about, you know, all of those combinations of things and then make a decision kind of based obviously on whatever your budget is or whatever. But I think you get a lot more in Mexico. Well, you do get a lot more in Mexico. So that's the appeal, right? This is nothing new. Like this path has been paved by so many people before us. Mm -hmm. There are, I think, over a million expats that live in Mexico. So why not us take advantage of this as well? You know, I just think that um, it's a great option and I don't knock those other countries. Um, Like I said, I think you're one of the first people that actually went to some of the same places we were considering Panama, Costa Rica. Um, Belize wasn't really on my list. I've been to Belize, but it wasn't on my list. But um, I felt that Costa Rica was more expensive to live Mm -hmm there in, you know, maybe the nicer areas. I thought that their utilities were pretty high based on some conversations I had with some other folks um, that, you know, had lived there for a year at a time. Um, And then I knew about Mexico, but just the rap it gets, I feel like it's pretty negative, like your two lady friends, you know, and I think it's one of those things where people need to come and experience it for themselves, even if you just do a trip, you know, just bop around a little and, and, and take it in for yourself and not necessarily, you know, have other people uh, adjust your or alter your thinking, right? right? Just because of whatever. And it's not because it's not based on anything because some people have been here or they're from here. And I understand that a lot of um, locals have been oppressed over the years. I know there's a lot of poverty here as well. They live way below, um, you know, poverty levels. I've seen it. Um, But I also think that there's also a lot of many here as well, right? The ones that have it, it's kind of not much of a middle class. The ones that have it, have it, right? Right. I feel like we're the, I feel like I'm the middle class in Mexico, to be honest with you. And then there's, you know, this. So there's like that in between, which maybe the expat life we come, we can bring our US dollars, which is a good thing. In some ways it pours into the community you know, I always impress on our community to to be mindful of, you know, what we do and how we, what we give and, and et cetera. But right. there, there's that very affluent level of Mexicans that, you know, they live very lavishly and yeah, they can drive those BMWs 
<laughs> and uh, Mercedes Benz, I see them, I see them, and I'm just like, who? You? Okay. <laughs> I remember one time a couple like years it. ago. Yeah, no, I would be very nervous. I I wanted to be off the grid, like whatever. My car looks needs to just be decent, and that's it. Um, but I remember once a couple years ago, I was driving by the hospital up the street, and I wasn't because I'm not really into vehicles like that, but it would it just hit me after the fifth one because there were like five or ten. No, there were about ten. Uh, what do they call those Mercedes wagons? The mm. I think it's a G wagon. My husband told me what it was. There were ten of them in a row driving just and I thought it was like a dealership or something. It was like a lot of young kids, like just one after the other, after the other, after the finally like at the fifth one, I looked up and I was just like oh my God, those are, you know, and just one after the other. And then it just kind of made me realize like, there's a lot of money in this country. And one of the pluses I think for us living in the country is that I don't think we'll run out of food. Um, you know, like you're not, you know, I don't think there's going to be a large shortage. I don't think their economy would uh, collapse necessarily if something went on in the US. You know, I don't think that they really rely on the US in terms of things like that. Um, I do know that Panama relies heavily on the US in regard to banking. And, you know, that was kind of the, some of the factors that I considered moving here. I was just like, okay, you know, they, there's an abundance of um, opportunities to grow your own food, uh, get, you know, there's a tienda on every corner here with fruits and vegetables, uh, meat shops and whatever. I do think that there is that kind of abundance of the ability to live off the land. So if there was ever anything really crazy going on in the world, I don't think that we would have like those shortages in this same capacity as maybe other parts of the world. So that right. was kind of a factor as well. Um, I don't know if that's other things other people have considered. I'm sure they have, you know, this isn't anything out of the genius box, but it was just my observation and coming here that a lot of people that don't have a lot, they grow everything, you know, and they live off of this. And it, they also sell, you know, every season. I don't know if you guys get this in Playa. There's something, it's someone on the side of the road selling a truckload of, mm -hmm. you know, peaches or <laughs> avocado if it's in season. Right. And I see the little ladies knocking those, um, you know, the things they call tunas off of the cactus. Have you seen those, the little purple, they're like a little purple fruit. Oh, uh, the cactus fruit. Yeah, the, it's like a purple, pink, and red color. They have green as well. Yeah, we haven't seen those cactuses around here, but we do know the fruit you're talking about. Yeah, they're called tunas. Um, maybe they're not in Playa. Maybe the climate doesn't allow for it, but we have them everywhere. And I see the ladies literally, because they're wild, they're everywhere. And they just, in season, they knock all of them off the tree. They put a little basket together and they go and sell them. You know, and it's not that they grew them, they just go, they get, they collect, they get mangoes, they get uh, the nopales, which is the cactus plant, they cut all the little thorns off. So the point of saying that is, is, you know, there's an abundance, <laughs> like you said, we're right. not going to go hungry. <laughs> I don't think we're going to go hungry. You're not you going to probably hungry get enough, your... you, You'll make a meal. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll eat that Nepal sandwich salad and be yeah. like, this is fantastic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I never had it before, but this is great. Yeah. So I, I, I really uh, appreciate that in general, you know, about living here. So, yeah. So are there like other things about Mexico you want to share? I don't know if you're... Uh, just, you know, full retirement, relaxing, like my husband, or doing, you know, something that you want to do, or you're passionate about, or you want to try your hand at, or are you already doing in, in Mexico, because it gives you a little more time? Paul is in full blown retirement mode. <laughs> hey, <Paul. laughs> He's in full blown retirement mode. Oh. Remember, he said that his idea was getting a little a, a condo on the beach mm -hmm. and just going downstairs to eat lunch or dinner and coming back up. <laughs> okay. And I said, well, well, was I included in your future plans? <laughs> because that was never my plan. <laughs> well, you know, backup plans and backup plans. You know, you got to have something just in case things fall through. 
if anything happened, I'm going overseas. I'm chillaxing. Okay. But um, <laughs> no, we, we're we're trying to find our niche. You know, my beautiful wife here. She um, after, she's been putting this house together um, this whole time. But before we got here, you know, she had a, a boutique in Louisiana where she oh. sold clothes and hair and. She has her own hairline and okay. line of candles and soaps and things. Um, these things that she's kind of slowed down with because we've been here in Playa mm -hmm. and she's trying to figure out exactly what she wants to do. We've mm -hmm. done some, um, we've been out with real estate agents looking at different spots to see what we can put together here for Playa, what our niche mm -hmm. is going to be. And so mm -hmm. she's going to have to figure that out because I'm just going to help her. <laughs> you like, sound like my husband. I'm trying to. I'm just going to help my wife, but I'm, but I'm going to help life. her with whatever <laughs> whatever she wants to do. I and love so it. you got that one out beautiful. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm trying. We're we're going to figure it out. Yeah, I'm going to figure it out because it's it's really beautiful here. But I I feel like I just need to do something. Mm -hmm. She she would like to, for us to open a bar or a little, a little small, you know, hole in the wall for expats and locals to come. Well, don't and, say hole in the wall. Say uh, a meeting space. A meeting space. <laughs> I say hole in the wall. Louisiana, that Just, time we spent in Louisiana. <laughs> but she would like to open up something like that. And I would love to help her with that. But we've been getting some advice that maybe we should stay away from that in this area. So I don't know. So our options are still <laughs> open. We're, we, yeah, so I'm still keeping my options open. Mm -hmm. And we're, I'm enjoying the retired life so far, you know. Mm -hmm. So far. Yeah. But, you know, just once I once I finish with the house, then what? Yeah, right. That's, that's how yeah. I felt. I felt like yeah. it took me a good, I would say, year and a half to kind of feel like okay everything's where I need it to be and that included my son finding the right school system uh, you know I thought okay get the house together no biggie right but it was a, it was a lot it takes time where you feel like okay I can step back from that now and I think with the language you know there were a lot of things that even things that I envisioned doing once I got here for example I immediately wanted to get into Spanish classes. I immediately wanted to do yoga. I immediately wanted to be, you know, this outdoor, whatever, hiking. And I did none of those things because I was <laughs> still settling into the house. And then when my son's school started up, I just thought, oh yeah, I'll find the school. We found the right thing. Da, da, da. And it just didn't flow that way. I changed him three times in the first year. And that was always on my mind. So I was always kind of, doing things for others in my family mm -hmm. things for us as well but i did not get to any of the things that were on my mental list and it took a while so i am right there with you i understand that okay. you will need this time even this i just kind yeah. of like okay you know i like this i enjoy what i'm doing here I like giving you know counseling to people who want to move and how to get to san miguel specifically um, so it's been a journey to say the least. And it's still here. I am three years later, <laughs> just right. figuring it all out. So take your time, but yeah, you know, why did you, um, say that it's not a good advice to, if you want to talk about that, to do like a little space in, uh, playa? is it because it's already kind of up and coming and there's a lot to do as far as you know, entertainment, is that, no, was that the... There's always a lot to do and there's always room for more to do because I mean, people come every day mm -hmm. and um, they're saying that because of the, they're saying that um, it wouldn't be a good idea because the cartel would want uh, gotcha. a portion of yeah. the proceeds. Gotcha. 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 We, want, we should stay away from businesses where we will get visitors from right. the family or right. the cartel. <laughs> and like coming here, I don't know who the visitors are, and I don't, you know, and you and I would tell, find out. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. But, but I tell Paul, I said, well, you know, maybe if I could just talk to somebody, they can tell me what areas not to look 
for a place in mm-hmm. so that I won't violate whatever they got going. Because I'm not trying to violate anything. I'm trying right. to go by the rules. Right, Just tell right. me what they are and I will go by them. If you say don't come on this street, don't worry about me. I will not <laughs> come on the street. I will be so invisible. Yeah, Yeah. I'll be like this. Yeah, I mean, I think that's hard for um, us, and I see us as um, you know expats, black expats. But um, you know, I think it's that we don't understand, and our my viewpoint is all TV, right? And like, Mm -hmm. oh. You know what I'm saying? And then I hear things and I know that it probably exists. I just don't understand the layers and what capacity I haven't had like a conversation with anyone. And it's right. definitely more accepted here that this is the way things happen and go down. So I, I feel you. It's, 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 it's a big fat question mark in my mind as far as like yeah. what's okay, not okay. So I think whatever you do choose, yes, it's like kind of keep it under the radar, off the radar, I guess. <laughs> that and that's the kind of advice we get. And so we are, uh, we're working on some projects. We, um, she's, we, we're going to take some Spanish classes and some video editing courses awesome. so we can put some content together. Um, and okay. so we have some ideas and some things in motion. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, but more to follow. On. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand you keep it till you get it together. I get it. So no, that's been great. Um, I think that again, um, you know, I created the uh, black owned Mexico. So when you do have it, just know that that's a space that you can share anything you. that you're putting out there. Um, you know, it's still kind of new, you know, I did it because there were like different places that I would go to look for information. I thought it was just nice to find it like a, you know, a social media Google, like just go over Mm -hmm. here and see if it pops up. And hopefully in time, it will get to that. Um, I found that we were, like I said, little pockets of people everywhere. And I remember what prompted me in that moment that I finally set it up was I saw someone post something about shea butter, as small as small as this, right? Little things can spark a, a bigger idea. And on another page, someone said, oh, I just got my shea butter. And the other page, the lady was looking for it. This was all in the same night. And I was oh. like, oh my God, this is crazy. Like, okay, if there's someone that ships these things, like, let's just put it here and just share, right? Whatever right. it is you're doing, whether it's a recommendation for a realtor. Um, so I hope that it will kind of gel a little bit more over time because I think it's a bit broad at the moment. Um, But the intention is, is that hopefully we can support each other no matter where we are in Mexico. If we hear of someone looking for something you might do or supply, um, or if there's a hair person or someone who provides products that we can't find here or a way to get them here, that this is kind of the intention to you know, share and support. And this is not to take out of the pockets of our local community. Cause I also tell people like, Hey, if there's a local person that can do some of the things that we need, it's a resource and information page, please share it. You know, like right. I interviewed a um, realtor months ago and um, I just, I think I just assumed that she was from the U S but she wasn't, she was actually Dominican and she lived in Mexico for a long time, but she was a realtor and she provides, you know, services. So, um, you know, it's also open to black expats from anywhere, uh, just to kind of put that out there. Cause I think some people get it that this is only for people coming from the U S it's from wherever you are, like you share your story, product service or whatever it is you provide. I'm, I'm happy to support all of that. And also the locals. Yeah. You know, trying, because I think that, things exist in places that we need things. We just don't know about them because there's not a outlet to share the information, you know? Right. So mm-hmm. unless it's a word of mouth in the community, then that's different, but, and that's a beautiful thing too, but sometimes it's yeah. like, it might be over there in that state. And I'm like, oh, okay, ship some to me. <laughs> yeah. So is there anything else you want to kind of put out there, share with us, or did we kind of cover it all? <laughs> So far, we've been putting everything on Facebook. I don't know. She does Instagram. 
Huh? That's enough. That's enough? <laughs> yes. You don't want to Because yeah. Paul will talk forever. He oh. will talk forever. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> She's like, save some for later, honey. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. He's like, let me get a sip. <laughs> love it. I love it. Well, I love that you guys had time for me and your story, your journey. I love that you did so much research that you actually went to these other places and ended up in Mexico, even though it wasn't on your radar necessarily but I really think that um when you know you know and right. I think this is the perfect story of the I knew this was my space you yeah. know even after landing in Tulum it didn't sway you away from Mexico it was sort of like, okay let me check something else out in Mexico so right. hopefully you'll get in your car and you know explore if you haven't already Check out some other parts of my come see me in San Miguel. <laughs> we can't wait. We can't wait to check out other parts. And we already have been talking about doing that. Um, we just will, I know I would feel more comfortable once I get a little more Spanish under my belt. Yeah. You know, uh, so I can know how to say, please let me go. <laughs> <laughs> just say no hablas espanol i don't know yeah. in spanish i don't understand you no yeah. i can i can say that um it it feels challenging but a lot of places it's outside of the smaller 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 like little villages which you know you have to seek those out you know what I'm saying? Like if you're driving on the highway, you're just going to see miles and miles of mountains and highways and, and mm -hmm. little, you know, like toll booths and whatever. Um, but for the most part, most of the places I've been to, there's always someone that speaks a little bit of English and you can get by. So just let that be kind of a little bit freeing for you that you don't have to feel stuck in Playa um, because of the language. Like most people will try to communicate and they've I've always had like positive experiences in, in Mexico even when we went to West Deca last weekend um yeah I remember the lady telling me she didn't speak English but then when I got there I think she wasn't comfortable doing it on WhatsApp and mm -hmm. also over the phone so I had a friend and I wasn't comfortable uh with my Spanish I mean I speak it well enough to get kind of the things because you know there's an order of conversation right hi how yeah. are you I need blah blah or what day what time when you're making like a reservation right and they start talking about a whole bunch of other things I just go I'm just like oh my god just answer the question you know yeah. <laughs> but in saying that when I got there she did actually speak English I think it's just their it, it goes both ways, you know, where we don't maybe have all the confidence and then they also are kind of lacking that as well. But in the face to face meetups, I've had most people that are like happy to try their their English with you and or try to figure out what you're saying just as a inspiration for you to, you know, not be fearful to get out there because you can't communicate because they will try. They will try just like they like to help. They will really try to come out of that circle of comfort and say, okay, what is she looking for? <laughs> what does she need? Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate your time Thank and you your story. Us. You're welcome. And we will certainly be in touch offline. If there's anything you have questions about, or if you plan to visit central Mexico, let me know. Cause we're close by all the, um, like, mountain type cities like Queretaro. I don't know if you've heard of Queretaro. That's about an hour. Um, I think it's to our east. And then there's Leon, which is like the leather capital in Mexico, another great city. Um, and then San Miguel, I actually love San Miguel. And um, there's Guanajuato City, which is also an hour away. So there's a lot of um, things to do as well. And the weather is nice. It's not hot here. <laughs> Okay, we'll have to check you out. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate both of you, and um, I will let you know when this airs. All right. Thank you. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good day. You, you too. too. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.